Today is a bike riding day. I'm fixing to go out fixing. <laughs> I'm still still quite southern, even though I'm northern. <laughs> uh, I'm getting ready to go out uh, for a little ride today. I'm gonna. I haven't been out in, in a bit, and I need to take the bike out. So I'm gonna go ride. And I was thinking I needed to. I don't need to, but I want to talk about what's been happening. I went fishing yesterday, and see, I obviously got pretty dark. I got some sun and got a little bit of sunburn. I had a good time fishing yesterday. I didn't even bring a camera with me fishing, and I bring a camera all the time, and I didn't bring one with me fishing. So I'm going to bring a camera on the ride. I'm going to take a little motorcycle ride. But I wanted to talk to you guys about some stuff like that I've done in the past and things that I just... I want to just have a little story time with you guys today talking about like when I was younger, what I did with my friends and doing stuff and how as you, as you get older, you get busy with your lives and you get busy doing stuff and you need to keep those friendships that you have when you're young and the real good friends that you have for when you get older. Like you can see I'm getting older and it's not because of that. Cause I still have my family and that's family's one thing, but it's always good to have friends that you keep for a long time. So I was lucky enough to have four of the best friends that I've ever met ever out of anybody that I've ever met in all my life. I've known some other people and I've had friends, other friends, but these four guys that I, grew up with basically that started a band with and did stuff with are the greatest guys I've ever met <laughs> not to get mushy but they're the coolest people I've ever I've ever been around out of anybody I've ever been around they're by far the funniest coolest people I went to, on a vacation I'm gonna talk let's talk while I ride I'm gonna talk while I ride jacket and yeah it's 80 something degrees this zipper messed up but it's working again okay messed up a little bit it's working again earplugs I always forget to put these in I like to listen to music as I ride but um this time I think I'm just gonna have a conversation with you all so I don't need to listen to music. Vents are out. Vents are open. Vents are open. I got this jacket a little bit too big. I've lost weight. <laughs> Thank goodness. Alright. Give it a shot. Give it a whirl. On this switch here. I can't see. Okay. Whoa. So I can just flip it like this. Alright. So let's, uh, sneak out here. Alright. Oh. Let me turn on my fire pressure monitor. All right, 
this thing should be using NFC. I don't know. I had it set for NFC on the screen back in the day. But anyway, so let's let's get let's get to the conversation that I wanted to, to talk to you guys about, and that's um how having friends over the years how important that is and how yeah you can have family and family has to be you know they're, they're always going to be family you know like they say blood is thicker than water i don't know what this guy's going so slow for blood is thicker than water you've heard that time and time again right that famous saying blood is thicker than water that's true so your family will always be there for you but when you find some friends that are your friends like through thick and thin for your whole life that's extremely rare to find friends I mean family's gonna be there because they're family they have to technically you know they have to be there you know kind of like it's an unwritten rule family has to be there for each other but friends, they don't have to be there for each other. Friends choose to be there for each other. So when I was younger, I made some stupid mistakes and I did some stupid stuff when I was, uh, you know, who, who hasn't, right? Who hasn't made mistakes and done stupid stuff? I don't know if there's anybody alive that hasn't made stupid mistakes and done stupid stuff, right? Everybody has. So. Years ago, I made some mistakes, and it was about 15 years ago. I did some stupid stuff, and I did some stuff I'm not proud of, which obviously everybody's done stuff they're not proud of, and I made some critical errors that I guess I was, you know, I don't know if it was because of I was getting older, I was afraid of getting older, whatever. I was just, I just did some ridiculously stupid things. Now, I didn't do anything to hurt my friends, I didn't do anything to hurt like I tried not to do stuff to hurt other people other than let them down you know everybody's done that they've done stuff to let you know you let you let people down it's it's what happens so I did stuff and one of my friends my really good friend Chris who I grew up with me and Chris were like real good real close friends growing up Chris Wall and I was friends with I let me back the story up. So, when I was like seven years old, so I'll get even further back. When I was like six or seven, I lived in Ackworth, Georgia, a little town north of Atlanta, about a hundred, you know, about an hour, hour and a half north of Atlanta. A little place called Ackworth, Georgia, just north of Kennesaw, Georgia. And um, I used to, as a kid. I used to ride up my ride my bike up the street to my friend Mark's house. Mark lived at the end of the street, up at the up at the top of the hill, where the bus where we pick up where we catch the bus in the morning. So, Mark was I'd go over there. Yeah, that guy. I waved to him, and he's just a jerk because he's a guy with no helmet, and no sense, no common sense. He just doesn't want to wave to other people with common sense. That's the way it is. Anyway, so so Mark was uh, my good friend, and I had, I was friends with Mark. Well, one day, I was probably 12 years old, something like that, and me and Mark used to goof off and do like the Jim and Joe Nelson show. We like do little audio recordings of being stupid like kids, you know, kids do. Like we had a radio talk show or we were musicians in a band. We always, we always you know, wanted to be musicians and stuff like that. But anyway, so... Mark, one day I called up there to his house, and I'm like, "Hey, is Mark there?" And his mom's like, "Oh no, he's he's he went to Chris's house to play." I said, "Chris, Chris who? Oh, Chris Wall. He went to Chris's house to play over in Kennesaw." And I was like, "Huh? Okay. Well, I can't go to Kennesaw. I'm just a kid, so I can't, you know, pick up and go to Kennesaw, Georgia. <laughs> it's like half an hour south of me, and I'm like 11, 12 years old." So I remember, I, I um, like the next time I call, every time I kept calling up there for Mark, he's always off, right, hanging out with this new friend of his, Chris, and it was pissing me off. You know how you're a kid, like, that's my friend. What are you playing with this other guy? Who's this kid you're playing with? 
You're not supposed to play with him. I'm your friend, not that kid. So, Chris, um, one day I called and Mark, Mark's mom said, oh, here, Chris is, she's in, he's in the back, back, backyard playing with Chris. I said, oh, Chris is over to the house. She said, she said yeah, he's, he's back there with Chris playing in the backyard. They had a big backyard right beside I-75, a highway I-75, um, and his backyard backed up to it. You could go way down next to the highway. So, so I go over there. I, I get on my bike, ride up there. Yeah, I'm like 11, 12 years old, something like that, 12 or 13, somewhere around there. And I ride up there, and I, I go right in, storm right in the back there. Who's the, who are you back here playing with? Who is this Chris guy? And I met Chris, Chris Wall. So we all started hanging out together. We started being, becoming friends. So I was being friends with Chris. And one day, uh, when I was, I guess I was about 15 or so, 16, Chris, Chris and was like, hey, you want to come over and hang out with me and Bruce over at Bruce's house? So we, we went over, I went over and hung out with Chris and his friend Bruce Sharpton. And me and Chris and Bruce were hanging out, and Bruce's brother Trey was there. He was pretty cool. We're hanging out, just doing stupid stuff, you know. They, they lived there. I guess I was 16. You know, I saw him at high school. I saw Chris in high school and stuff. I was driving a car. So I went over there. I hung out with Chris and Bruce. You know, and this is my new friends. And I remember telling my mom, I was like, hey, uh, Chris and Bruce are over in Kennesaw. I'm going to ride down and hang out with Chris and Bruce. And my mom's like, Oh, the little red-haired kid. I said, yeah, Bruce has red hair. How, you know, how'd you know he's got red hair? She goes, oh, you always, you used to sleep over at his house. I was like, no, I didn't sleep over at his house. He lives, he lives way down in Kennesaw. He lives half an hour away. You didn't take me down there. She goes, oh, no, he lives right over here in Ackworth. He lives like three blocks from us. I was like, no, he doesn't. He lives in Pine Tree Country Club down in Kennesaw. And she's like, oh, you used to, used to spend the night with him and his brother. His brother's got black hair. I'm like, yeah, Trey has black hair. How'd you know? She goes, that's Dr. Sharpton's kids. I was like, yeah, the, the eye doctor. She said, yeah, you used to go hang out and go to sleep. So apparently when I was like six or seven, like right when we first moved to Ackworth, I made friends with Dr. Sharpton's kids because I went to see Dr. Sharpton, the eye doctor, for my glasses, and he was the doctor in town. And anyway... Long story short, I used to hang out with them when they lived there before they moved to act to Kennesaw. Well, so now I met Chris, and through Chris I met Bruce, who I already knew before, which is, a, how weird is this? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that never happens. It's weird. So I started hanging out with Chris and Bruce, and they become my new best friends. And so me and Chris and Bruce did everything together. We went down to the lake and hung out together. We went drink, drinking together at the lake. We did everything. Well, we were like, hey, we should we should start a band. So me and Mark had started a little band, you know, a little stupid thing. And I remember I was away. I went to um, Tuskegee Job. It's a long story. I was away for school for, for a couple, like a year. And while I was away, my friends, Chris and Bruce and Mark and Trey, and another friend of theirs, Chuck Moore, they got in the newspaper for come up with some group group name called Uncle Creepy's Railroad, and they did a story in the college newspaper about them, like it was some kind of real band, and it wasn't a band. <laughs> they were just being stupid, goofing, you know. So they had their picture in the paper as Uncle Creepy's Railroad, and you know they're going to be they're going to be this new group, this this very odd group. But they're like teenagers, they're like you know. 16, 17 year old kids. So I came back after school and stuff and we started saying, hey, we should actually do this. Let's make a, let's be a band. Let's do a band thing. So we started, I picked up a guitar and Mark had a guitar and Trey already, see Trey and Bruce were musically inclined. Trey and Bruce, their parents, you know, they played saxophone. They learned musical classes when they were young. So, which I find awesome. So they had musical classes when they were young, and so they, they learned a lot um, back then of, of musical theory and stuff like that. So for them, 
to get uh, you know in a band, it was a pretty easy thing. You know, Trey was like, I'll play bass. He already had a bass. And Bruce was like, hey, I could learn the keyboards. They had a piano in their house. Bruce was always playing with it. So, and that, Bruce, let me be honest with you, I, I, I've met a lot of people, and Chris is really good at it too. But they can pick up, like they can hear a song like once, and they kind of know what it sounds like. The, they know how the song's put together the right way. It's just weird. Bruce could be sitting at the piano playing just fiddling around with keys, and he's like, oh, wait a minute, isn't that Lionel Richie? I'm like, what are you talking about? Then he keeps going, he goes, yeah, yeah, this is the Lionel Richie part of this song. Just some oddball song, and he's like, he starts playing and singing it, or just from ear. Like, he could just listen and hear it and go, oh, those are the, these are the chords from the so-and-so Lionel Richie song. He was just really, really talented like that. Bruce and Chris and Trey were all very talented that way. Bruce was, uh, Trey, well, Chris wasn't as much, Chris, had to practice, but Chris was determined. If he, if Chris got a, a, a set of drums, he was going to practice and learn how to play them. He liked drumming, even when he was. I got there's a video we have of him at like 16 years old, 17 year old, beating on a single snare drum. He bought a snare drum. That's all he bought. He didn't have money for stuff, so he picked up a snare drum. So he's beating on a snare drum. Anyway, so this is a uh, getting kind of long and. I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I thought you guys should know that I've, you know, years past, I've, me and the guys, we got together, we played a band, we played Battle of the Bands, and we did other stuff, you know, at Kennesaw College, we played in bands, we played a couple shows, we did a, a show for uh, uh, this Rob Mims birthday party, Mims Properties is owned by Mims, Mims Properties up in, in Georgia, you know, with a big nine bedroom lake house, on Lake Lanier. Anyway, we did a lot of different stuff, and we got to do a lot of stuff together, and we made a bunch of music, and we made, created our own songs, and we really liked playing our own songs. That's just what we liked to do. We liked making our own music. We wanted to go our own way. So, it was just, um, you know, I made some mistakes, so me, me and Chris were like best friends, and I even, I shot his wedding, and I remember during Chris's wedding, he said, look, he asked his dad to be his best man because he didn't want to offend me or Bruce by picking one of one of us over the other. That's how, I mean, that's how much we loved each other. That's how much we were like brothers. We really would do anything for each other. So, you know, that's what he told me. He might have told Bruce, there's <laughs> something different. But he told me he picked his dad so that he wouldn't, uh, Make, give either one of us make us feel bad. That's he cared about our feelings and didn't want us to feel bad. If, I, if he picked Bruce as his best man, I'd, I'd be hurt a little bit. Like, hey, what the hell, man? As much as we hung out. Bruce was his best friend growing up, so I wouldn't blame him if he picked him. But that's the thing. I'm sure if Bruce, if Chris picked me, Bruce wouldn't blame him either. I guess he'd rather than have any hurt, feelings hurt, he picked his dad to be his best man which is fantastic anyway, so it's one of those things. So Chris like disowned me when I was like 15 years ago when I basically uh, screwed up a bunch of parts of my life and they should, he should have, I say he should have because I'm, you know, one to talk. I guess it'd be easier coming from his position. I don't know. But if anybody knows me, they know that I will come back from anything. There is nothing. I won't come back from. I walked for six miles, six and a half miles every day at three o'clock in the morning to go to work. Nothing will keep me down. Nothing will ever keep me down. I'm not a slave to anything, ever. So, you know, I've got into drugs or stuff like that. I don't want to get all into it, but I, I made some mistakes and they should have known that, hey, he's going to come out of it. Maybe his way of him disowning me helped me to come out of it better. You know, it helped me to say, hey, wait a minute. I'm losing everything I've got. I've lost my best friends. I need to I need to stop this and stop being stupid. So that's what I did. So maybe that's part of the thing that made it better is me stopping being stupid. Uh, that's basically what I did. So I came back and I haven't heard, I saw 
Chris and Bruce and them on Facebook, and I missed them. I was like, man, I miss my friends. And uh, I bought a motorcycle. We all rode up the Blue Ridge Parkway years ago. I mean, I'm getting into a whole bunch of different stuff that we did. Anyway, so long story short, we, we ride motorcycles together. We've done stuff together. We played in a band together. Everything. I mean, it's like, it's like guys that do everything together. And... Uh, so it was it hurt a lot to have him not around as my friend you know hey where's my friend chris he's not around anymore you know i can't he's not calling me they're not contacting me they're ignoring me so finally one day chris says hey look i'm gonna he sends me a message and says hey long time no talk uh i'm gonna be going down i'm i he works for a cfo of uh, vp racing fuels now he worked for different companies, got married, had kids. But all of them got married, had kids. The kids grew up. We all got older. And I guess now he thought, well, I should contact Mike again because we were such good friends. We shouldn't really treat each other this way. And I, we shouldn't. I shouldn't be, be. You should never be mean to your friends, especially little stuff. You know, I didn't do anything to them. I didn't do anything to him or anybody else personally. So... You know, everybody makes mistakes and stuff in life. And so how you treat others, I think, is the most important thing in life. Uh, you should treat everybody with respect and treat everybody how you would like to be treated. And I think that's probably, Chris is a Christian, my friends were Christians, so I'm sure they were like, you know, that Jesus would have forgiven uh, mistakes that people make. Jesus would have forgiven it. So I should forgive it too. You know, and maybe that's what maybe that's what he did. I don't know. All I know is that, you know, he contacted me, and I went up a couple of weeks ago. We had a, a a big get together. I went up for the weekend, and I'm not kidding. That was the funnest weekend I've had. In free I laughed so hard over that weekend. I've never laughed that hard before in my life. It was ridiculous. I was laughing so hard the entire time. The entire time. I was laughing for like four days, three days straight. We, from the time I got out of the car, I was waiting for them to come up the hill. They come up the hill and Chris gas in this little four-wheeler and hanging his arms out like, woo yeah, big party. You know, and it's just from the minute I saw those guys, I gave them a hug. I didn't stop laughing for the entire, and there, if there's one thing, life is, the best things in life is, is humor, is comedy. Laughing will make you live longer than any medication of any kind. It's guaranteed. It actually will. Laughing actually cures you. It makes you feel good. See, that guy waved. It makes you feel good. Laughing is what make is what life is about. Is to have fun and laugh. And I mean, when you have just a big open laugh, I laughed so hard my stomach and sides hurt for like three days after I come came back. I'm not kidding. My stomach actually hurt. My sides hurt for like three days. Like, like why does my side hurt? It's from laughing for four days straight. I never laughed so hard as I laughed all that time. And I never had such a good time. That was the time I had when I went up for the... I mean, I got to go back and hang out with my friends again. I'm going to I'm gonna um, get a trailer or truck or rent a truck, something. I'm going to get this motorcycle up there because I would drive it up, but it's a seven-hour drive. And I could, yes, I could take a day, an extra day, but I don't want to waste a day driving there, you know? I want to go up in seven hours, get up in the morning, leave early in the morning, get up there that afternoon, we take off the next day and go ride, and go up to the, or even that day, that night, go off and go ride, go camping, just go out and go for a ride up the mountains. He, my buddy Chris lives in, in North Georgia, right on the mountains where we used to ride bikes all the time. And it was the most fun. I, I mean, that was awesome. The, I mean, yeah, there's other stuff that's fun, but you combine riding motorcycles with good times and laughs and having a great time. There's nothing compares to that. Nothing. 
There's, you can't compare it. Any day on two wheels is better than a day not on two wheels. I don't know another way of saying it. Any day that you're out riding and just feeling free out in the, out in the wind and the air and the sun, it's, just, it's incredible. Even with the uh, pr protection on a helmet and stuff, I'm still outside of the vehicle. It's it's a it's a different feeling. It's a different thing. It's like riding a, a roller coaster. But to do it with friends, there's there's nothing better. To do it with friends that you grew up with, it's nothing better. Nothing better in, ever. There's not there's nothing. I don't think anything beats that. It can't. So anyway, that's the quick story. That's the run of the thing. What I want to talk to you guys about today. I really didn't have a plan. I was just going to talk about stuff and uh, tell you what's going on. I haven't made any videos lately um, because I've been busy with other stuff. But going out of town, I took off. I went up there. I didn't share videos from up there. I didn't make a vlog. That was my personal time. And I didn't want to hold the camera up and talk to you guys the whole time because you guys weren't invited to the trip. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> that trip was not for you. It was for me. So <laughs> it was for me and my friends who I've known for freaking 30 years now. And it was for them. It was for us. It wasn't for y'all. I love y'all. And I'm glad you guys take the time to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. And every day somebody comments on one of my videos. And I really, really like it. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you guys commenting, liking, subscribing, all that stuff, all that goodness. But you don't have to. My life would go on if if I clo if YouTube closed up and said you can't no more YouTube videos ever. Nothing would happen. Uh oh. Something's going on here. Oh, he's trying to go around. So this guy pulled the trailer down the wrong road and sees sees that uh, Max Bridge load. He accidentally pulled the wrong way. She's trying to. I'm not gonna cut. I'm not gonna cut him off. She. He's backing up. He's just gonna go straight. You go straight. Go ahead. Keep coming straight. You're good. Come on. You're good. Just come straight back. You're doing good. I'll go around when you get up there. Don't worry about us. There you go. Here, now I'll cut, I'll cut right in front. You're good. See, I let him. I let him do this thing. I don't need to sit there with my bike getting hot. It's water cooled, but it doesn't matter. See, I I can blip shift from first to second, but it's a little jerky. I always go from second to third. You know, shift with clutch, shift without the clutch, just quick shift. But uh, anyway, so basically, that's the story I was going to tell you guys today, and I'm going to post some of the stuff that I can little bits of it but um, I can't post a lot of stuff from back then because we were swearing and stuff like that just being stupid kids teenagers mostly I've got the video I can't they had all these videotapes and thank God my friends save stuff yeah you know, they, they got mad at me because they were like oh you taped over it I'm like I don't even have this tape you taped over it that's something you taped over <laughs> there was stuff that they accidentally got taped over you know and that's what happens when you're young but a lot of it wasn't I need to grab my uh, I need to go through my box and find some tapes I've got tapes of when me and Chris went to the Isle of Man back in 98 I think it was 97 I forget what year it was now I'm getting old but anyway when me and Chris went to the Isle of Man I've got tapes high eight tapes from back then before DV came out I need to find a, a, a way to play them because I, I still have them. I still have those days. I'm just driving you guys down here where I go fishing all the time. This is where I fish. 
and I like this trip. So this is where I fish, so I thought I'd come down here. I always see motorcycles coming down this down this road, so pick up some speed and cool this bike off. They have a two, 203 degrees. Anyway. Anyway, so needless to say, basically, you get what I'm talking about. I don't need to go over this again. But we had a good time, and I think in life, life is too short. You're, before you know it, your life is over. And you've lived your life, and if you don't go do the stuff that you want to do, or look at all those people just hanging out at the, at the place where we hunt for kayaks. Anyway, if you don't do what you want to do with your life, and do the things that make you happy in life, then what's the point? There's no point. There's zero point at all of of living your life and not doing the things that you want to do. You'll regret it years later. So if you want to get out there and ride motorcycles, go do it. Get on a motorcycle, buy one, learn how to ride it. You'll you'll love it. Ride responsibly, but buy one and learn how to ride, you know? Go do it. If you want to you want to learn how to ski, snow ski, go out there. Go get it. Go do it. Save your money, go snow skiing. Find out how much the trip is and go do it. I never really cared about snow skiing. My buddy Chris loved to snow ski, but I didn't really, I wasn't really athletic that way. I uh, I fell down water skiing. I couldn't, I couldn't even water ski. I could, well, the funny thing is I could ride the, the stand up jet ski. I had no problem with that. But water skiing, I was pretty bad at. <laughs> I couldn't get up on the skis. Because the rope pulling me just felt weird. Anyway, there's the ocean. There's the ocean right there. Anyway, so that's really all I was going to say is when you get to the, you get older, don't live your life when you get, you know, when you get in your upper and your upper years and you're in your 50s or 60s and think, oh man, I should have. Because that really sucks. There's nothing that sucks worse than not being able to do something that you could have done when you were just a little bit younger and could have done it. And you thought, well, I just don't have the money for it, or I'd rather do this. You know, and in the end, do it. Right? So, me and my friends, yeah, we weren't great. We didn't have it. We weren't the best musicians. We were barely passable as musicians. I played guitar. I practiced a lot. We used to practice in a school. I practiced all the time. But I was never really all that great. I was an okay guitarist. I knew what sounded good. I knew what I liked. I liked a certain sound that I liked. And I was big on the tones and the sounds. But I was not really a great guitarist. I was okay. You know, I was passable. I was an intermediate at best most of the time. I would never call myself a really great guitarist. I had a great ear for music, and I liked certain songs, and I liked the way the music played the sounds were, and how the, how the guitar sounded a certain way. But I was never a really great guitarist. Like, I couldn't play solos. I never practiced it. I didn't really care about solos. I'd rather uh, support the band rather than play solos to show, show how great of a player I am. It's just the way I was, just the way I am, really. So, you know, um, but we, what I was saying was we, even through everything, a lot of people would never do it. We got in front of a thousand people or so at Kennesaw College, State College. We made a video, somebody recorded it as a video. And we got up there and played the songs that we practiced and played and some of them we wrote the lyrics to that day. We had the music going, but we didn't have the lyrics for it. We had to come up with stuff last minute. But the point was, was we did it even if, even if we thought they were going to laugh at us. Even if we thought, ah, oh, they, they probably think we suck. We're not all right good musicians. Yeah, the other people were better musicians that came up and played in battle of bands. We did not win it, obviously. But we were the only band that played all original songs. 
Every single song, we did not play a cover song. The other groups played all cover songs, not a single original. Did they play the cover songs right, properly, and they sounded good? Yeah, yeah, they played them fantastic. But they sounded like other people. But that's good. I mean, if you're a good cover band, that's great. I just didn't want to sound like other people. I'd rather sound like me. I want, I want to sound, I want to play me, not them. I want to play as me. It's just a personal preference. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and get something to drink up here somewhere. Just some tea or something from the gas station, probably. I gotta stop for a couple minutes. What is this? I don't have to, I just want to. I'm gonna stop and grab something to drink. Anyway, my whole point in all of this is do what you love, do what you want to do. Guy's car broke down probably. Flagler, this is what happens on Flagler Beach. Guy's car broke down on the side of the road. Happens sometimes, old guy. Anyway, do what you want to do. Live your life. If you want to go live out on the ocean and be a surfer, go do that. You know, I doubt you'll make much money at it, but you never know. You might get famous and make tons of money at it and be like the world's best surf surfer ever. Nobody knows until you try. You don't know what you can do until you try. And that's one thing I learned from my parents early on when I was young, when I got an erector set for Christmas. If any of you guys remember what erector sets are, I couldn't put it together. I was like six years old. I couldn't put it together. I was, I was frustrated. I was cutting my fingers. And I didn't know how the stuff went together. And I went into the room and started crying. And they said, Mike, we know you can do this. I said, I can't do it. I don't know how to do this. They said, we know you can. Just try. All you got to do is try. Even if you can't, even if you don't make anything fantastic, keep trying. And if you try hard enough, you can do anything you want. And I thought, yeah, at least I'll try. So I've always lived up to that standard of trying, right? I've got a guy that I work with, a, a guy that I wor works with us, and he's not, he's not a very good electrician. He's not, you know, he doesn't know much, but he tries, you know? He doesn't slack, oh, he slacks off a little bit, but he doesn't slack off, he tries. When somebody tries to learn, I'll give them extra credit. I'll let them pass on some stuff if they're trying, if they're actually trying to learn and to do things and to learn how to do it right. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pass on stuff if you try. If you don't try, I got no time for you. You don't try, you don't care. It's, I don't, you, you obviously will, will never try at anything in life, so what's the point? You have to try at everything you do. You have to at least make it, at least try, right? You get a motorcycle, you can't ride it, you can try, try again, get back on it. It's not gonna hurt anything, try it again. I've always been that way. I've always thought that way. I've always thought, well, if I can just try, and it probably goes back to my upbringing with my parents. My dad, mom and dad said, we know, just keep trying. We know you can do it. If you try, you can do it. And I thought, yeah, if I try, I can do it. Now, I might not, but <laughs> at least I thought I could, right? So that not that the most important thing, thinking that you can do it? No matter what you put your mind to, you can try and you can do it. Hopefully, hopefully you can do it. Anyway. That's it for now. I haven't checked out the footage on that camera yet, but I'm gonna get something to drink. Um, and I'm gonna stop when I get downtown here. There's the pier. See all the people, they're out there fishing out there in the, in, the, in the water, having a good time. That's awesome. There's a guy and his dog out there. That's so awesome. Everybody having a good time coming out to the beach. It's been a bad two years, you know. COVID hit almost two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, 2019. COVID-19, it's 21. COVID hit, everything got uh, shut down and it just got bad for the past couple of years and it's time for people people are done with it i think they're like all right this is it i'm done with this let's get out there 
See, you can be safe and go out there on the beach by yourself. These people out there fishing, they're not they're not near anybody. They ain't gonna catch nothing. Uh, well, hopefully they catch some fish. <laughs> but they're not gonna catch COVID. They're outside. See, that's the thing that, that I think is kind of stupid is when they, oh, you gotta stay inside. Well, that's inside is where you get, that's where you get diseases. That's where you get stuff. That's where you catch stuff. The kids in the school, that's why they're passing the school so much, because you're inside. Now, unless you're quarantined by yourself, but even then, if you get out in nature and you go out to this beach, you're not going to catch COVID out here at the beach. Oh, they probably found out that salt water kills it. I wouldn't doubt it. Anyway, it's just something I was thinking of, you know, just interesting times where we live in. Boy, it's hot out here today. It's 87 degrees. Eighty-seven degrees. I'm hot. I'm not gonna stop off at this one. There's one on my way after I take a left up here. I don't need to be over here. All right. Okay, so I stopped off at the racetrack. Now I'm headed back. <clears throat> And I didn't even notice that my that camera was recording this whole time. It was sitting here just recording the sky, I guess. I'll have to go back through and re-edit it. Anyway, so I just wanted to... I'm listening to music right now. I'm listening to Billy Idol, Don't You Forget About Me. <laughs> so apparently he made a, a version of this song. <laughs> cool. I love old Billy Idol. Anyway, that was one more thing I wanted to tell you guys is thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, let me know if you like stuff like this. Just little drives where I talk and discuss stuff. Or if, you know, if you're bored with it. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you're like, no, nah, I want to see more videos about your computer. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Or editing. You know, I look at my... At my videos and see which ones are the most popular and really my most popular ones are, are videos where I review stuff or edit or teach people how to edit but I'm not making these videos to be popular I'm making them because I'm interested and, and I like to talk about stuff and I like to have people to talk to and I like to talk to you guys about stuff so you get to know me a little bit you know make it interesting but anyway so I'll holler at you guys later Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more stuff like this. Or if you, you know, don't want to see more stuff like this. You're like, less motorcycle videos and more videos about, you know, editing or playing Battlefield or whatever. I play games too. Battlefields, the new Battlefields coming out looks pretty freaking sick. So, I still, I still play Battlefield. I haven't played at all this this holiday weekend i thought uh, you think i would play but i haven't been playing it much lately so i've just got so much other stuff that i'm doing that i haven't had time to sit down and play some battlefield games i like to do it once in a while to get away for a little bit but i've been practicing my guitar playing that going out and visiting my friends you know all these different things these guys came to a complete stop here. Dude walking without a shirt on. Anyway, so big thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. If you don't want to see videos like this, holler if you do want to see them, holler at me. And uh, if you got any questions about anything, feel free to feel free to ask. Um, I'm sure I'll be doing a bunch more videos soon. I'll be doing more things, um, reviews of stuff, especially this holiday season. I'm probably going to get some more 
interesting things to do reviews of and see what you think. I'll, I'll, I'll give, you, give you my opinion of them and see what, if that's, if you value my opinion. I don't know. I like getting stuff and giving my opinion on it. I get something new. Now, I don't do every single thing, but I do a lot. Anyway, I'll let you later. Take it easy, YouTube. Later.